All right, Scott, so what I want to try to do now is set up slugs for organizations as well as channels. And this is so that we can create the URL because you could have many organizations, you could have many channels. And, and so that we can say Ken's team, and then I'm in the fit for, for production channel and I'm gonna look at the projects. And that way we can just kind of filter down projects. We're not showing them all at once. So let's give that a go. So what I'm currently looking at is a few different options. So we have this option where you just go channels and then channel ID projects, or you could have like a slug, Ken's team, fit for production projects. I mean, you're gonna name everything, so it's easy enough for us to create those slugs. Um, another option also is just literally to have like projects and then you can append the channel. But what we wanna do as well is like, if you set your org, like you basically select it once, I think the best thing to do is, we could either, I mean, we could either store that as in like a cookie so that it's just persisted that way. And you can also set um, on an organization. We do, when, when you join organization user, we, we could probably add a default. We probably should add that is default for that user. So we know that this user wants to default that org all the time. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to show what's your active organization. So it could be in the URL, we could use the URL for that. We could, you know, whatever channel you've selected as well will tell us what org you're in. But as you navigate through, you kind of want these things to be set. So it's kind of, I flick over to a specific channel and then I can have it. There's also the option of you don't, we kind of default you always to your channel, but then as you're going through, so we'll default, but if you want to select, you can see them all. That's another option as well. So I'm just trying to figure out what's the nicest way to persist that across pages. So I've also been looking at um, how other people do it. So specifically GitHub. So they have the org and then the repo. But in our instance, that's basically the channel, right? So if you go into issues, you can see it's locked and lifted, which is the org, the repo, and then the page. So for us, that would be Ken's team, fit for production and then projects, right? So that's that's what they've implemented there. So we could do that as well. So that we could achieve by creating slugs. So let's give that a, a go and see how that feels. So to implement that, we're gonna need to add a slug to the orgs. We're gonna have to add a slug to the project. So when we can, we can do this automatically as well. So when someone sets up a title, they're gonna have to create a title for a project, we can create a slug. And then the same thing with the org, we can automatically do that. They can then go and change that later if they want to, but we'll do it to begin. We will have to add a unique constraint to that because you can't have projects or organizations, sorry, channels or organizations with the same slug. So let's go and add those migrations in now. So here we're gonna go Rails G migration, add slugs to orgs and channels. All right, so that's been created now. Let's jump into DB migrate here. We're gonna say add column, nice try, organizations, slug string, and that needs to be null, false, and we're gonna have not default of that, but we're gonna have a unique constraint here. Unique true, yeah? And I think by having that, we'll have an index on there. So we're gonna have also channels, slug, string, null, false, unique, true. Now, this is probably gonna fail. So we'll run it and just see. Because it's gonna say we've got a null there, yep. Yep, so that's where Copilot can stitch up. We need to index unique, true. Let's see if we can do that. It might not be able to do this in a migration either. Unknown key index, yeah. So I think we're gonna have to add those indexes after the fact. All right, so let's just do this. Add index channel slug unique true, add index organization slug unique true. Let's go. Yeah, so we can't do that right now because it contains a null value. So what we have to do is actually just go null true. Because we already have records, it's not gonna allow us to do it. That makes sense. So there we go. And what we can do here is now we can just say null false because in the future when we run this in production, because we haven't deployed yet, this will always be null false, all right? So now we've got channels and organizations. Now let's have a look at what that looks like in the DB. 
So if we go here, channels have a slug, that's indexed. If we have a look at the indexes, not the links, the indexes, you've got channels on slug and it's a unique index here. All right. And then the same thing will happen on organizations. All right. So those are both indexed and unique. All right. So let's just go here. We're going to say Ken's team. And I think what we'll also do is we'll down, we'll force a down case on this always. So we don't end up with like capital K, capital T, just so that we, you know, so people can't hack, like have the same slug, but one of the letters is the uppercase, one of them is lower. So you don't want that to happen. And then channels, let's just get you refreshed. Where are you? Fields, slug, channels there. And then this is going to be fit for production. So we'll kebab case them like that. And that will be the slug. I think that's similar to what friends at GitHub do. So we'll run with that. All right, so let's add some validations here. So we're gonna say validates slug uniqueness true on organization and the same thing for channel, right? What we also wanna do here is I'm gonna add a private method. I'm gonna add it to organization as well. So we're gonna go here. And we're gonna say um, set default attributes. And now what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna say self.attributes equals, and we're gonna say slug is self.slug or, and then we're gonna turn the title. So if there's no slug set, so if the user hasn't specifically defined it, left it blank, we will then go through and actually create one using the title, okay? All right, so I'm just mucking around here to just show, we can take in Rails console, we can use Ken's team and then we can get, call a method called parameterize and that's gonna kebab case it like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then we can see like, is there, if we had Ken's team, that gets parameterized like that. Um, Ken's team gets parameterized like that. Cool, so that always forces it down and it'll kebab case it um, if there's a space, right? So it could be Ken's really cool team turns into that. So that's exactly what we want. So it's called parameterize. So we'll use that. So back inside of our organization model, we're gonna go self.slug or self.title.parameterize, right? That's what we're gonna set the slug to. So we're gonna do that there. And then we're gonna do this on channel as well. Set default attributes, sick one. So that's it there. So we're always gonna validate that the presence of the title is true. I mean, is, is there, is true. And then from there, we can use the slug and we can set it to that. Now, what we do need to do is we need to add in a before save. So let's just see if we've ever done this in this project yet. I don't think so. Before, they've got a before validation. So we can just add it to before save. So I like to do that. We'll do that in between here. Before save, we're gonna set default attributes, right? So we do that on the org, we're gonna do that on the channel as well. And that way we always have the slug set. So now what we can do is let's go here and reload Rails console and let's create a new organization. And I'm gonna call this Daryl's team. All right, and we're gonna hit, we need to create the, set that as a title there. There we go, and you can see that the slug was because I didn't create it, is there. It's called Daryl's team, perfect. And now let's go and just create a new channel. We're gonna go channel.create. I'm just gonna go my call channel. Let's be cheeky here and let's go with one that's real. Title, the prime time. I wonder if any of you have ever watched that one. There we go. There's a rollback because a channel needs an organization. Organization is organization dot find one. There we go. We got the prime time set up. All right, now let's update our routes so that we use this slug as a prefix. All right, so cool thing about the routes here. We can use the scope and we can say scope channel slug as channel. So that's gonna be the prefix name now when we call these routes. And then we can give the regex what kind of um, 
what we expect the channel slug format to be in. So can it only have numbers? Can it only have letters? So in this, I've just said any word character for now. And then we're doing a nested resource of projects. When we run Rails routes, we get this. So now you can see channel projects, right? So we could say channel projects path that we then expect to pass in the channel slug. And then we get projects and it's going to route us to the projects index. And it's going to pass in that variable. So we can use that to filter down the projects, right? So now just an example, you can see here I've got fit for production slash projects, if you can see that, it's very small. And that takes us to the projects page. Now, if we go and add in this Kanban route, just here, right? We should be able to go projects slash Kanban. And there it is, All right? So that's the page we were working on before. But now you can see we've got our, our channel name up there. So I think that's probably the, the good case is you start and you kind of set your, your default channel that you want to work on but then as you're going through you could say okay i want to so what we'll do is in an, in another video here is um create a channel selector and when we select that it will change this out to a different channel that we run so it could be second channel right and then we will render the videos or the projects just for that one channel okay so it's basically a filter and what i'm doing here is kind of copying the style from GitHub, all right? Just a bit nicer to look at because we could have had um, channels slash one slash projects like that. Like that could also, you could do just a simple nested route like that, but it's not as clean, I guess. And it's also a bit harder to read. Like this is very clean to say, oh, I'm on my second channel projects. And if you share that link to your team, they can instantly see, oh, it's for that. And we're working on that channel. Just a, I guess it's just a little bit nicer to work with. Doesn't really affect too much. We're gonna do a lookup on a indexed value there, so it should be pretty fast. All right, so just to quickly show how this could work. We've got two channels now. We've created two. They both belong to organization one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump into the, we need to create a channels controller here. So, do we have, let's just go in here. We're gonna go Rails G scaffold controller, and this is for channel. All right, so we run that. Now we should have here, we should have channels. All right, so you can see all these really cool channels and does absolutely nothing. Channels one and channels two, and you click on them, it does nothing here, just you can look at them. But what we're going to do is let's say when we click on this channel, instead of taking us to channels one, we're going to route you to that same Kanban route for, for that channel. So let's go in here. Now we're going to go into the views. We're going to go to channels. We're going to go to this channel. So it's currently in the index route that we're looking at. So this is currently linking to show this channel and this is let's go to um channel projects right so now we've got that there and now what we're going to do is we're not going to link to um just the straight up channel I'm just going to wrap these in brackets so I find it a little bit easier to work with but we're going to go into the channel projects path and let's just have a look here so if we go rails routes again we're looking for, so we're going to go into channel slug, right? So we're going to go, let's go to this channel projects Kanban path, right? But now what we do need to do is pass in, we're going to say channel slug here, and we're going to say channel dot slug, right? And I actually think you could probably just pass in channel and Rails will do its magic. Let's see. Um, we need to add path on here, right? And you can see now it's got it there. The only problem is we do need to say channel slug. It didn't do its magic, but that's okay. Let's see. Channel projects path. That's what does this need? Channel slug. Channel projects Kanban path. Yep. And then channel slug. Should be able to pass that in. 
Okay, the reason it's failing is this unmatched constraints, right? Possible unmatched constraints. So that's because it's this channel slug is fit for production. Now, if we just jump back into our routes, I did notice this before. So we've got this regex here. We need to have not just word characters, it needs to be all other things, all right? So we need to fix up the regex. So I like to use this tool regexer or rubula. This is probably the better one because the Ruby one. So our test string is um, fit for production, right? And then we're just saying at the moment, it's just a W. So you can see that it's got these hyphens in there that doesn't make, doesn't want to work. So we need to allow, we need to, we need to say or that, all right? So we need to allow that or that. So let's see. If this works and this if, if we add the plus sign in there hopefully this works so all right so we're allowing any word character or a hyphen let's just also check this underscore that matches as well all right so that's all good let me just do this okay so i just i just wrap that in brackets and then plus which means many it, it can be more than one so one or more of so we're basically saying one or more of any word or a hyphen, and that's a match. So now we can see, if we look at the URL, it's probably really hard for you guys to see, I apologize. Fit for production slash project slash Kanban or the primetime projects Kanban. Now, if we click on that, here's the URL. So let me paste that into here. It's a bit easier to see, right? So there's the primetime projects Kanban, or if we go back to this one, fit for production. So you can see now we're using this in here. Now the final piece of this is inside the projects. We're now in the index route, I believe, and no, in the Kanban route. What we wanna do here is we wanna just go puts, I wanna just say param, and I wanna say channel slug, yeah? And let's just have a look inside the console. I'm gonna just add another puts here, and then we just refresh. Now you can see here, here's our slug, okay? So we're getting that in there. So now what we can do, instead of all, we're going to have where, and then what we have to do here is we're going to have to join. So we're going to say dot joins, organization, uh, sorry, channel, right, dot where. And what we will probably do here is create a scope. So we don't have to always do this because we're going to do use this a lot. So we're going to say where, and then we're going to say channels, slug, is equal to params channel slug, right? Let's see if this works. This still works. Yep. So now we're getting, we're still getting all our results. We're joining the channel and then we're passing in the channel slug. Okay, so that's now, we're gonna be able to filter all our results by the channel. So I guess the easiest way to show the before, I should probably should have shown the before and after, but if we go pro, we can do this on the index route as well. So we'll grab this. Let's go to the index route. So we can just go straight to the projects path. We've got one project here. And then if we go to the prime time, I guess we only have one project at the moment. That's probably our problem. No, not project ideas. Projects, we got one. So let's create up a, set up another project quickly. So we go Rails C project.create and we're gonna say, what do we need in the project? We need an organization. So organization ID is one because we only have one of those right now. And we're gonna have channel ID two. Two, yeah. Need a title. We're gonna say scoping projects by slug. What have I done? Ah, uh, got to add the parameter name, title. All right, there we go. All right. So now if we go into this here and just change this back to projects, fit for production has two, but we know that's not actually correct, right? So if we now change this like that, you now see it's scoped down. That apologize again, can't really see it's in black. Let me undo it, refresh. You can see here, there's one, two projects. 
Now, if we add that in, you can see there's only one. So now we're actually scoping this down. So we're taking the projects. So this user will eventually have, will policy scope it as well. So they can only see the ones that they belong to the organization. But now what we're doing is we're adding another filter, which is the channel slug. And by the, we're grabbing that from the URL and we're filtering all those records by that channel slug and creating. So now we're creating a filter without them having to constantly select. So when we have something like this in this view here, right, that's the channel name. When you select that and change it out, what we'll do is we'll actually change out the URL for you. And that makes it really easy to share things, right? Because sometimes you've seen some apps, you'll change a value, but then you'll go and share it. But then the, user, the other person on the side goes, I'm just seeing this. And it's like, oh, no, you got to flick the channel, change it. This just prevents that, right? And the final piece that I want to quickly do in this video is inside of project, let's create a new scope, right? By channel, perfect, like co-pilot, good on you, mate. So we're going to say by channel. And then we're going to pass in the channel slug and it's going to do exactly what we did. Joins channel where channel slug there, perfect, right? It's like it knows what we want to do. So now what we can do is we can say project dot by channel and then we just pass in the slug. And I, I reckon we rename this to by channel slug. And I might even say where channel slug because by to me feels like it's going to return one. We want to do many, so we're filtering it. So we're going to say where ch project dot where channel slug is this, all right? So let's just update that. So it's be where channel slug. Now that is, I will check the naming conventions that might change over time, but we will just run with this for now. So now we can do this. And what we're going to eventually end up with would be policy scope. So that will be the authorization piece. It's like only show the projects or filter down the project that this user has access to. And then from there, because the user could have multiple channels, filter those down where the channel slug is equal to the one we've grabbed from the URL. And it's going to be that easy. All right. So we'll add that policy scoping in later. But that's it. So now we have access to jump through and actually change out these things and scope it all down. So hopefully you enjoyed that one. Catch you on the next one.